some perspective on this weekend lake effect storm. I'm meteorologist Don Paul. Welcome to my podcast, Don Paul Bits O Blather, but no blather today on weather and climate. If it makes you feel any better, this bearer of bad news did suffer a 45 minute power outage just a short time ago with a house that lacks a generator and a fireplace that only heats the living room. I'd have had it coming, but power is back so we can do this podcast. This rapidly intensifying lake effect snow band late this afternoon has already undergone its first oscillation, one of several over the next 48 to 72 hours. It started out north of Buffalo and has moved quickly with thunder snow south of the city and the airport and now lies across many of the Buffalo south towns and curves off to the northeast. Within this band, there is thunder snow and whiteouts are occurring and travel within the band is absolutely treacherous with visibility at times down to close to zero as the wind howls and the airport between four and five o'clock did endure a peak gust to 68 miles per hour. We're still in a high wind warning until later tonight, but winds are probably going to slip just below the high wind criteria, that is gusts over 58, by later this evening. That doesn't change things much, except that we may see a reduction in the number of power outages which have already been occurring. There have been numerous outages. When the winds come down a little bit, uh, a little less street, uh, stress on tree limbs and power lines, but winds will remain strong right through the night and into Sunday. And as you know by now, the game has been moved to Monday afternoon at 4.30. I'll give you some quick good weather news about that. It's still going to be very cold, but it won't be as windy Monday afternoon. And it does appear any lake snow during those hours will be well, uh, well north of the Buffalo South Towns and north of Buffalo as well. So travel impacts on Monday, especially in the afternoon, will be far less than they would have been tomorrow. And yes, the lake band would have been slipping south of the stadium in most of our guidance during the afternoon on Sunday, but you'd still have wind chills in the single digits, very tra difficult travel conditions en route to the stadium in the morning with the intense lake band this evening, slipping south of the metro area into southern Erie County, for example, but then moving north again later Saturday night and crossing back to the metro area and then north of the metro area by dawn and then slipping south back into the metro area and the Buffalo South Towns during mid-morning on Sunday. Oscillations make this one heck of a forecast and computer models in general have some differences between one another. And in a, a paradox, this very serious winter storm is a much more difficult meteorological call than the deadly blizzard of Christmas 2022. In that storm, we had the strongest indications, in fact, days in advance, of very little oscillation. And with the bitter cold and winds gusting over 60 and over 70, with the band remaining nearly stationary, we could better predict the impacts. And although we sometimes obsess on accumulations, and we're doing it again this time, it's the impact of the combination of snow accumulation and the wind. With light winds, this would be a much lesser impact storm. And occasionally we do get lake effect snow with winds not in this range, not this time around. So wherever this lake band is tonight and tomorrow, travel within it will be difficult to almost impossible. And that's why that travel ban is going up uh, at nine o'clock tonight in Erie County. And in fact, uh, the official statement says people traveling at that time who aren't with emergency vehicles will be subject to arrest. So you need to take that seriously. I don't speak on behalf of the government, but I'm just relaying to you what we've all received in special alert systems this afternoon, which is an improvement over how things were set up communications wise in the Christmas blizzard uh, two years ago. In the meantime, uh, tomorrow, uh, again, very difficult travel conditions at first north of Buffalo in the north towns, and even a little bit of southern Niagara County, and then into the metro area by mid morning, including the city, whiteout conditions with west southwest winds at 25 to 35 and gusts up to and over 40 miles an hour producing frequent whiteouts and near whiteouts. 
Why is there no blizzard warning if we have some occasional blizzard conditions? Well, first of all, we may not have the blizzard criteria in terms of wind speed. You need sustained or frequent gusts over 35 miles an hour for three hours, consecutive hours, that is, in order for the National Weather Service to issue a blizzard warning, along with visibility below a quarter of a mile. It currently doesn't appear we're going to be quite at that threshold, and the National Weather Service, and were I an employee of the NWS, would be loath to have a blizzard warning that we know isn't really going to verify. It's a severe weather term, and we want to save it for when it really needs to be issued. That said, you're going to encounter, if you try to drive in these whiteouts, blizzard conditions, which will make travel uh, absolutely treacherous. And where the accumulations are highest, uh, impossible travel conditions may develop, even if there were, weren't a travel ban. But there is going to be one. The airport, no in or out flights through tonight. Uh, Saturday night. So the airport is essentially shut down for tonight. And uh, there will be a lot of work for the ground crews to do to clear the snow away from the gates. Tomorrow, another hard hit coming at least for a short period during the morning with new uh, snow accumulations. The best chance for the heaviest accumulations when all is said and done in this first lake event of, event of several coming this week will be over the Buffalo South Towns and parts of Southern Erie County. But some significant hits less than in the south towns but still quite significant across northern erie county north town suburbs and even a pretty good taste a little less than that in southern niagara county and also including grand island when that band shifts northward toward dawn sunday morning so it's a complex forecast as i said oscillations does make it tougher do make it tougher let's get that syntax right and also, differences between our high-resolution models are lessening confidence just a little bit on the timing of these oscillations, only that they will occur. That remains high confidence. So that's the basic picture for this first round of Sirius Lake Effect. Uh, during this week, there will be uh, some additional lake effect potential setups with west and southwest winds and still true polar air in place. There also may be a coastal storm developing uh, during the week that could give the northeast big cities their first serious snow, although not overwhelming. And uh, some of that moisture could reach back across upstate and western New York in addition to the ongoing lake effect. The upper air pattern will continue to favor well below average temperatures from here on out to the remainder of this week coming up ahead of some limited uh, moderation in the pattern developing next weekend and into at least the first few days of the following week. So that's the overall picture. Uh, the cliche applies. If you don't have to travel, stay home, stay warm. Hope you don't get a power outage because uh, in an extended power outage with this kind of wind, the wind chill index is for loss of heat through your skin. But the wind chill effect, as I've mentioned in previous episodes, affects the loss of heat through your walls, windows, and roofs. And the house will get much colder, much faster when it's really windy like this with falling temperatures now into the 20s. And uh, that wind chill effect will continue tomorrow, even though winds tomorrow will probably be below true high wind potential. That's a severe weather term, and that's why meteorologists are picky about that. But it will remain very windy. So uh, all the cliches apply here, and I will keep you up dot updated on the podcast as well as on social media. I've been a busy little beaver on Facebook and on Twitter. No, I won't call it X, Twitter. And stay safe, and I'll be talking with you very shortly.